Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. If you guys are new here, my name is Emily. Welcome to my little motherhood channel where I take care of all things mom. In today's video, we are definitely getting it all done in the kitchen. We are restocking, we are baking, and we are cooking and cleaning. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. So on this day, I planned on making banana bread, chocolate chip cookies, and sugar cookies. But instead of trying to take care of one at a time, I figured I would try to tackle all three at once, and I was gonna make a single batch of both the banana bread and sugar cookies and a double batch of the chocolate chips. Luckily, I didn't screw anything up and mix up the measurements. Uh, I wanted to take care of everything all at once because they all kind of call for the same types of ingredients. So. I figured it would be easier to just kind of do it this way. So I'm making a double batch of the chocolate chip cookies because I've made this Kirkland recipe before and I wanted to freeze a lot of the cookie dough so that I wouldn't have to make it again the next time I wanted fresh chocolate chip cookies. So I just scoop out a bunch of the cookie dough on parchment paper and then freeze it and then we'll be packaging them up in a little bit here. And then I wanted to make some sugar cookies and eventually frost them later in the evening. I made some smaller ones at first, but then I doubled up on the dough and made them a little bit bigger. And I kind of like this size a little bit better. I had to cook it two minutes longer, I believe. And they're closer to like store-bought cookie size. So I think I might do that again in the future if I make these sugar cookies. But I took care of assembling all of the cookie dough while my bread was baking because I really didn't want to overwhelm my oven. So here again, I'm packaging up my frozen cookie dough. I'm doing about 24 cookies per container so that I can cook them in two full trays. And then I'm scooping out the cookie dough that I plan on baking this day so that I can have some cookies for visitors when they come over. So I recognize that I am not making or sharing the most healthy recipes in today's video, but that doesn't mean that I can't share a healthy decision that I have been trying to make in my daily life. I am trying to drink more water. So I would like to thank Parson Ver and Fussin for sponsoring this portion of today's video. They sent me this amazing BPA-free leak-proof sports water jug. It is ginormous and it has little time stamps on the bottle as well as some motivational quotes to kind of encourage you to drink throughout the day and reach your goal of kind of drinking the entire jug in one day. In addition to the jug itself, it comes with a little lid that snaps shut as well as a straw in case you don't wanna be lifting up this heavy jug, at least when it's all the way full. It has a handle, so if you want to use it as a workout weight, you can definitely do that. And the lid opens really easily with the push of a button. When you get this, you just have to assemble the straw. There is a top piece and a bottom piece. Mine had the top piece already on it. And the bottom piece is silicone and it just is nice and bendable so that when you have your liquid at the very end, it can suck it up for you when you're using the straw. When you do close the lid, the straw does bend down so you can keep the straw in there and you also don't have to worry about it falling out because of the design of the top of the straw. 
I would recommend that if you use ice with this, you might want to have a towel on hand because it will have some condensation. But for me, it's not a big deal. I leave my water jug on my counter and it is staring me in the face all day, motivating me to drink some more. So again, I'd like to thank Parsonver and Fussin for sponsoring this portion of today's video and sending me this amazing jug. If you guys would like more information about this product, go ahead and check down below in my description box. I will have everything there for your convenience. But now let's go ahead and restock some of my pantry items. So one way that I try to save some money is when I buy flour, I try to buy the biggest bag offered and then I portion it up in gallon size bags and freeze them until I'm ready to use them. And then when I'm done with the bags, I throw them back in the freezer for the next time that I buy a big thing of flour. So a gallon sized fills up my container nicely and you know I kind of always have flour on hand and didn't spend an arm and a leg for you know a bunch of small little bags. And then it was time to try to refresh my pantry. For those of you guys who watched my extreme pantry makeover, uh, I got these two products, which I am in love with. I'm happy that for the most part, my pantry has stayed fairly organized, but we have kind of eliminated a lot of the little snacks and treats in this Lazy Susan. So I wanted to kind of refresh it and add some other snacks in there. One of them being Pop-Tarts. I love strawberry as well as the brown sugar, but the unfortunate thing is they don't come labeled once you take them out of the box. So I made sure to grab a Sharpie and just label them so that they can you know, be easily grabbed in our Lazy Susan, but still recognizable. And then because we had a little bit more space on the bottom level here, I decided to package up some of the saltine crackers that Juan likes to snack on so that it is a little bit more like portion control. Uh, that way he's not tempted to eat the entire sleeve all in one sitting. And it also makes it easy for him to grab and go if he wants to take some to work. So next up, we are making a, I don't know, not so unhealthy, not so healthy dinner. <laughs> We're just gonna be cooking up a bunch of burger patties. Uh, I'll be having like one of these tonight for dinner. And then we have a bunch like leftover for Juan to eat when he gets home from work. So I'm not making this every single night for him. I like to prepare two pans with foil and then put the patties on one pan, they're frozen season them and put both pans in the oven at like 400 degrees and I let the patties cook for about 30 minutes and then you'll see I will flip them onto the hot pan that was also in the oven so that they can you know not be surrounded by as much fat or liquid from being frozen and they get back on a nice hot surface and then I re-season them and throw them back in for about 15 minutes. About five minutes before they're done, I do like to add cheese to some of the patties because I like cheese on my hamburger patties. Juan doesn't usually want the cheese. So I add cheese to a couple of the patties here and then throw it back in the oven. And then you can see we're making tater tots for a little side dish.
in the past I haven't used foil and I would just have to like scrub the pans to get all the fat off so I love the foil hack even if it leaks a little bit it makes cleaning up a whole lot easier and then in the meantime we have Jack over here I wanted to give you guys a little glimpse at him he is now kind of spinning he's not crawling he's not sitting up unassisted but he does like to spin and only really turn to his right, which I find hilarious. Aubrey would always turn to her left when I'd lay her on her back, and he's the total opposite in so many ways. But moving on, we got a Walmart like grocery haul, so I'm just putting everything away and just kind of restocking our fridge and some more pantry items. So to label this cranberry container, I'm going to be using a chalk marker. And this is great if you don't always use the same container for like the same things. If I put raisins in this next, I don't want a Cricut cut label that says raisins or cranberries and then I switch it out and use it for something else. So a chalk pen makes it really great. They erase and it's not permanent, but it still does look pretty elegant. And then with the salt container, I just cut off the top of the salt, um, like little lid that is cardboard and fit it to a mason jar, which makes it a little bit more elegant if you like mason jars in your uh, pantry, instead of just seeing the plain old salt container from the store. So it's later in the evening and Aubrey wanted to help me frost and sprinkle these little cookies that I made earlier in the day. So we're just getting this out and putting it on this little stand that uh, a dear friend of mine gave me. Do I want to hear you eating the cookie? I bet you want that, huh? Do you approve? Once these cookies were complete, it was time to clean up. So I unloaded the dishwasher and then loaded it back up again. I feel like dishes are a never ending chore in my house. I do them at least once or twice a day, especially when I'm baking, which is the only downside, but you know, it, you do what you gotta do and whatever didn't fit in the dishwasher, I decided to wash by hand, and then I gave my sink a nice little scrub. So I'd like to thank you for kind of joining me in my day in the kitchen of restocking and baking and cooking and cleaning. I hope that this video motivates you to maybe try a new recipe like I did with the sugar cookies or just kind of use the ingredients that you have to make something delicious like my family's banana bread. But anyways, if you guys are new here, I would love to have you stick around and subscribe. I kind of just do all things mom and don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. It really helps out my channel and I really appreciate all of you. We're watching. We will eat this cookie laid wet. Do you think? to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday, you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. 
Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.